welcome back to the channel. And this is the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Samsung's latest and greatest flagship. And I know that this video is a little bit late, but I actually wanted to wait for one specific update to hit this phone and give you all a better idea of what it's like to use the phone a month and some change after its release. So just like any of the other reviews on this channel, let's start off with its specs. So this year they're using, of course, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is just an absolute beast of a processor. You're also getting 12 gigs of RAM, and you can also spec this up to one terabyte of storage, which is really nice for a pro or ultra phone. That's perfect if you're a big DeX user and use your phone as your everyday computer, but as well as your smartphone. Now, this phone also packs a huge 5,000 mAh battery, and this phone can charge up to 45 watts wired and up to 15 watts wirelessly, which is unchanged from the S23 Ultra. Now, up front, there is a new 6.8 inch WQHD Plus AMOLED display. It's now flat, so screen protectors are gonna be so much easier to install. But another thing that you all should know too is that the screen handles glare so much better than previous Ultra phones, as you can see. The latest update also addressed the slightly washed out display by giving us the option to kind of boost its uh, vividness of the display. So if you want a more colorful screen, you can bump up the saturation by using a slider. In all honesty, the flat screen is a great change and I love this new anti-glare coating that they added on here. Uh, it really does make a difference, uh, especially when compared directly to last year's S23 Ultra. And speaking of the S23 Ultra, the display on this new one tops out at 2600 nits peak, which I guess you can say is, you know, the standard nowadays for flagships. And this does help a ton when using this phone outdoors on a bright and sunny day. Now, another thing that's new here on the S24 Ultra is this new titanium finish on the side of the phone. Now, this isn't that much of a drastic change for them since, you know, they're not coming from stainless steel uh, like Apple, but this does make the device feel slightly better in hand. Uh, I do like that, you know, it's slightly more flat overall and that the S Pen is more flat with the frame of the phone. Overall though, I didn't notice the weight to be all that different from, you know, last year's S23 Ultra, but this new titanium gray color is my favorite color and looks really good. But if I were to buy the S24 Ultra though, I'd probably get the Samsung exclusive color in that nice orange color. Uh, and in case you didn't buy it directly from Samsung's website, uh, but you got the titanium gray color, you might wanna check out channel sponsor D brand and pick up their sunset orange skin for the S24 Ultra. Uh, this skin alone can basically turn your titanium gray S24 Ultra to what looks like an almost one to one replica of the Samsung exclusive color. Uh, now you can also pick up other colors or design on dbrand's website. So if you guys fancy a different look, check them out by going to dbrand.com slash heymarkl or click the first link in the description below. And huge shout out to dbrand for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now, when it comes to performance and day-to-day -day usage, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is pretty much the gold standard for a flagship in 2024. It's powerful, it's efficient, and just a little bit faster than last year's SoC when it comes to overall performance. I was able to use this phone day in and day out without it having break a sweat. I couldn't find a single app that can slow the phone down. So it didn't really disappoint here in the performance department. Uh, you know, whether I was just scrolling on Instagram, TikTok, or X, or maybe I'm playing Genshin Impact, which runs at 60 frames easily, and the best part is it does it all without it getting hot or throttling after 45 minutes of usage. So all in all, I can't complain about gaming on this phone. Now, gaming and day-to-day -day computing isn't the only thing that's important for the S24 Ultra. Uh, this year is all about AI, uh, and I'm sure you're sick of hearing about AI by now, and it's kind of pointless to go over the uh, new AI features on this phone just because I was told a few days ago that starting next month in March, the S23 series phones, Z Fold 5, Z Flip 5, and the Tab S9 series are gonna get these AI features that's exclusive to the S24 series. So, you know, it's really nothing special at this point. Plus these features will apparently be paid features in 2025. And one of the best AI features that they showed off, which is Circle to Search, is already on the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro since early February. So yeah, it's kind of lame that they're not exclusive to the S24 series and they're going on a paid subscription route. And I kind of just wish that they offered a lifetime subscription for the S24 series and you know have older models or other Android phones uh, have it be paid features since they did debut these features on the new phone. 
But anyways, when it comes to its battery life, I'm going to put you guys on a little hack or tip here. And I said the same thing for the S23 Ultra last year. But if you go in your settings app and you search for performance, you'll get a search result for performance profile. And in there you can choose light instead of standard. And basically what this will do is sacrifice about 10% of your phone's performance, uh, but in return give you roughly about 30 to 40% less power consumption and about 40 to 50% efficiency. From what I can tell, this actually extends my phone's battery uh, even further, which I'll take because if I can get a solid day and a half or maybe even two days on this phone, this is a killer feature, and even if you have QHD Plus on, uh, 120 hertz enabled, you'll still get better battery life than having you know, the performance set to standard. Now, when it comes to software and the updates that I've gotten, really all that there's new here, at least with you know, the recent update that I installed on this phone, uh, are bug fixes and making sure that the phone is more stable, but also adding that option to make the display a little bit more vivid, and also some performance updates on the camera front which makes this the perfect segue to its camera. Okay, so the S24 Ultra on paper may seem like a downgrade compared to the S23 Ultra, but in all honesty, I kind of like what they did here. Uh, instead of having two 10 megapixel zoom cameras, they changed that 10x zoom to a 5x zoom, but they did bump up the resolution from 10 megapixels to 50 megapixels, which I'm a bigger fan of, because you can technically still digitally zoom up to 100x and even 10x, with a decent photo, but having 3X and 5X in my opinion is just a far better zoom range than 3X to 10X, which leaves a ton of space uh, for digital zoom between that 3 and 10X. Now as a whole, the S24 Ultra is definitely equipped with the most versatile camera system on a smartphone. You have four cameras that can give your photos a bunch of different looks, from uh, an ultra wide at 0.6X to a 100X digital zoom, which to be honest, isn't that great? Uh, but in terms of its overall photo quality though, it's very similar to the S23 Ultra from last year, but with slightly better colors that are more true to life and less post-processing. Uh, in terms of low light photos, it looks great with better white balance performance than in years past. Uh, but from my personal experience, the photos didn't look too muddy or noisy in the shadows, which is, you know, a great sign. Uh, but yeah, as a whole though, the S24 Ultra with its you know, versatile camera system is definitely overkill for some people, but it's nice to have when you do want that extra reach with the two telephoto lenses. Now, the recent update did also mention better video performance when using the back cameras, and I did play around with the video before and after the update, and to be honest, I didn't really find anything different uh, from before the update and after the update in terms of video quality. Maybe the stabilization is a little bit more stable, but besides that, the quality looks to be the same. If anything, it's kind of a bit processed for my liking, but it's definitely one of the better videos that I've shot using an Android phone though. Uh, the image stabilization, like I said earlier, is pretty impressive. It almost looks like I'm using the phone on a gimbal. And another thing that I noticed is that if you're shooting videos in pro mode, you can actually toggle the video to shoot in 4K 120, which is something even Apple's iPhone 15 Pro can't do. And this is something I don't think that they talked about at all in any of their presentations. So that's really cool to see here. And it's not just the 1X lens. You can also use the ultra wide angle lens here. But yeah, that's the Galaxy S24 Ultra in a nutshell. Basically, it's an S23 Ultra that features a titanium build with a flat display in a much brighter and better display. You're also getting what I think are slightly better cameras that's more refined and tuned and a much more faster processor that's also more efficient. If you already own the S23 Ultra, I don't think there is a need to upgrade to this phone. It's basically the same phone, just a little bit better. But if you are coming from an S22 Ultra or an even older Samsung device, the S24 Ultra is most definitely worth it. Performance is top notch, it's great for gaming, the cameras are really, really solid, and basically gives you a super versatile camera system. Personally, I'd rather have all 50 megapixel camera systems than having a mix of 200, 10, 12, and 50, and maybe make the sensors on all four cameras a little bit bigger. Uh, but I'm not sure if Samsung can pull that off just yet. But I'd love to be wrong, because seeing what Xiaomi, Oppo, and Vivo can do with their camera systems are really impressive, and I think Samsung can do something similar given the size of their company. But besides that though, the S24 Ultra is easily the fastest and most complete smartphone at the moment. Whether or not you're a fan of Samsung smartphones, they're doing great things here. 
And if you decide to pick up this phone, you're not gonna be disappointed. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to do so because we are trying to get to 100K subscribers and we're so close to hitting it. And with your help, I think we can get there a lot quicker.